Hey guys, welcome to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klebzeski with Adam Atkinson, and we've got a fun new series. We're going to give you a syllabus. What would Contest Prep University be without a syllabus? And this came to my mind, Adam. You sent me a great idea, and I loved exactly what you said. Uh, you know, all the all the steps we want to go through in terms of the principles. People really need to know the foundational steps. But I'm in the middle of two intensely fast. Uh, summer terms, a, a summer term for uh, a degree I'm doing. And man, the first thing you do, you live and die by that syllabus. You print that thing out, you post it, you make sure you're doing everything you know, by the dates. And I think that's an incredibly important thing for people to understand in contest prep. And the very first thing you do with a syllabus is you look at the reading list. What books do I have to buy? So let's talk in this first step about the kind of content we want our friends to fill their minds with, our coaches to be giving to their clients. And of course, the first thing that comes to my mind is to never allow yourself to stray from having something supported by evidence given to you by coaches who are driven by evidence. So we, we just did a coaching series, and, and I'd love to hear your thoughts again, just to reiterate how important it is to know where you're getting your information and how you are going to validate it yourself personally. Yeah, more important today than any other time with Instagram, Facebook, um, you know, podcasts that a lot of people are doing, they will talk about, you know, maybe antidotal evidence or, you know, I did this with this client and this is what happened. But a lot of times they don't have the research to back it up. And I've even seen, you know, these coaches say, well, I read a lot of books. And I'm like, well, what books are you reading? Like, share your sources. So um, it's just like math. Show your work. Show us how you got this answer. And uh, I think, you know, it's a really good way to lure people the wrong direction by just stating your opinion. And uh, there are things that are not scientifically proven yet, but there is a lot of research that gives us the, the option to make an educated decision on what you're presented with. And I know you and I are the first ones to go to PubMed or Google Scholar or, you know, plus one. And we're going to we're going to look at those those you know, legitimate research sites. But in terms of our own industry, who are the voices you trust the most and where do you go? I, I think of, you know, Eric Helms and Trexler and everybody involved with mass, uh, our own global nutrition coaching mastermind. You've got people doing research in the exercise science world like Brad Schoenfeld you know, what, if, you, if you could just boil it down to kind of a short list of here are the people you need to double check with, who would that be? Yeah, so Lane Norton was huge with my development and even getting into a scientific-based approach. You, of course, and then that led me to Eric Helms and then also Bill Campbell. I actually got to uh, work with Eric Trex Trexler over at Beyond Limits Training back in the day. And I didn't realize what a research junkie he was until I got to meet him. And uh, I've kept uh, in touch with him over the years. And these are people who have a passion for coaching, but their passion for research is so much greater. They're incredible coaches, but they just want to research all the time. So these are people that I view the top of the pyramid that would blow us away if they had the capacity to work with more clients, but they don't because it's all based on research. So in a way, they're like my professor to help me mm -hmm. sniff out things that I don't have time to sniff out because I'm working with so many clients, you know? Absolutely. And you know, there's, there's, a, there's a culture war right now. There was actually an NPR article. This, this guy wrote this book saying, you know, why don't we trust experts anymore? And, and he said, it's, it's not because we think that they, they're not smart. We just think as a society now, we are smarter than them. So never before have people gone into their physician and said, no, I think you're wrong because I, I read this thing on WebMD. So you're telling a medical doctor that you're smarter than them. And, and I think to your point, when, when we find those people who are that passionate about the research, think of all the information that they have disseminated down into one stream for you that you can then say, okay, I trust this person. I can trust what they say, but let's get some different perspectives. <clears throat> that leaves a lot of people out in that second rung, third rung, maybe to completely ignore, but you really do have to, like you said, create this almost little board 
uh, of advisors in your own mind of who you're going to pay attention to. Absolutely. It's really easy to get lost if you listen to too many people. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, you guys stay tuned. We got, we got nine more episodes in this series. We're going to give you the full syllabus, everything you need to know for a successful contest prep.